been inserted through the mouth of this bottle, piece by piece, glued together with the aid of long tweezers and wire. It was made as long ago as 1874 by Mr. Gorbis. Come in. Mr. Ripley? Yes. Do you expect me to jump through a little hole like this in a cigarette paper? Why, well, yes, anyone could do that. You can, you see? You put a hole through it like this, and if you cut it in a fashion like this, you can easily jump through it. You fold it in a fashion this way. And then you cut it like this and that. And you see that? I follow that diagram. And now, when you open it out, in this way, it'll fit right over your head. Be very still. Yep. Now you see, you jump through that hole, the cigarette paper. Believe it or not. I believe it. Maybe you might be interested in some pictures I have drawn recently. A few of them have caused some comments. Now, for instance, I'll show you the picture of Abraham. Abraham was not a Jew. Abraham was a Babylonian. Einstein, the great mathematician, one time flunked in mathematics and failed to enter his school in Zurich. They say the air is free. However, in Holland, it was not. The Count Sir Senna sold air to all its inhabitants and charged everyone who owned a windmill for the privilege of using the air. Uh, naturally, the most talkative person in the world is a woman. So I'm going to draw for you now the picture of a woman who can speak at the rate of more than eight words a second. Many of you folks doubt this young lady can speak more than eight words a second. She is here now, and I'd like to introduce her to you, Miss Conley. This young lady will now read from a page of more than 200 words. This is taken at random from a court record. This copy is entirely unfamiliar to her. And uh, you can time her if you like, and you will see that she can read. 200 words in 24 seconds. Question, about what time was it when you reached home after the accident? I could not tell. Question, do you remember whether there was a doctor there at night? Yes, the question, who was the doctor? The doctor answered. Question, what did you do there, if you remember? I do not know. Question, recollect whether he was there the next evening? Yes, the question. How often did the doctor call? I think it was more than three or four times a week. Question, what time did she improve? And from a week or two after the accident. Question, I will ask you to say to the court and jury when it was and where it was that you saw Mrs. Howe the next time after the accident. Answer was only a day or two after at her house. Question, how often did you call Mrs. Howe? Answer, once or twice a week. Question, where did you see the doctor after you called Mrs. Howe the second time? Answer, in his house. Question, in his house? Answer, yes, at his house. How would you like to try to win an argument from her? Now I'm going to show you the strangest man that I've ever seen in all my travels. I came across him a few years ago in the northern part of Africa, and he looked something like this. Although this man may not appear unusually strange now, however, at the time, he had on his head horns more than 18 inches long. I uh, couldn't bring him with me, but I did the next best thing. I took a photograph of him, which you will see now. This one may sound a little bit fishy, but there is a fish in the sea, a little small fish no larger than your hand, a jelly-like little thing that can destroy the largest and most ferocious man-eating shark that sails in the deep. It looks like this. This 
called a diadem. It is a porcupine fish. And like the porcupine, it has quills on it. And when the shark swallows it, you can only imagine the result. Now, you just watch this shark. And now you see, this is the end of the shark. At about the same time that Lindy arrived in Paris, there arrived in this country, in the celestial home of Mr. and Mrs. Pop, a little Chinese boy. Now, usually the Chinese name their children after numbers. They call uh, their first number one, number two, number three, and so on. However, Mr. and Mrs. Hop called their little Chinese boy after Lindy. They named him One Long Hop. And he looks something like this. This is One Long Hop. And I'd like to present him to you, if I may. Well, hello, one long hop. Hello, Rick. How are you? Hi. How about you coming out here and, and saying something to all these folks out here? Maybe you'd sing them a little song or something, huh? What can you sing? Hello, baby. Hello, baby. the wonder dog, Rin Tin Tin, captured by men who believed he could lead them to a secret gold mine belonging to his mistress, Dolores Valdez. Ever since she inherited the mine, Dolores has been beset by enemies, especially by agents of Amos Harkey, who has stolen an old watch and found in it a clue to the location of the mine. A queer character, known as Limpy, steals the watch from Harkey. And Harkey, knowing that Rinty can lead him to the mine, captures the dog. The sheriff, however, has condemned Rinty to death for killing cattle. And in order to end the search, Harkey secures a wild dog from a traveling show, intending that the sheriff shall kill him instead. Raymond, a friend of Delores, not knowing of the substitution, comes to the rescue, but finds himself facing the wild dog, who attacks him. As he is fighting for his life, Dolores and Buzz at the Valdez Ranch are threatened by a sinister shadow. And now for episode four, Trap. your scheme. If things don't stop happening around here soon, I'll be afraid of my own shadow. Put that thing away. Remember, that's what they're after. Thank <laughs> you. 
dog has killed Rizzy. <laughs> That's the first break I've had in years. That goes to Texas Kid with Rizzy. This is a wild dog. I got him. Captured the dog and we start for the mine. Tell me, you captured the dog that killed that colt. Where is he? He's in the back room upstairs. He attacked one of my men, and I shot him. I'll take charge of him. You stay in town and keep your eyes open. Go. Hiding back there. Ah, uh, no. 
Only Greek. Don't mind me. there was a reward on his head. Would you still deny having seen him? Yes. Suppose I told you that he is the cactus kid. It makes no difference. I have seen no one. If I told you that you are shielding the murder of your father. And you, you know who killed my father? I only know the man who murdered your father left in a deserted cabin Sombrero with a bullet hole in it. There it is. Do you object if I search the grounds? Don't believe him, Miss Valdez. on your head, is there? Oh, my head. It is worthless. You're not the cactus kid, are you? Many have called me that. Then you are? And this is yours? It is. Then it's true. You're the cactus kid and the murder of my father. But... Call them back. Oh, do you believe that if I had killed your father, that Rinty would trust me? Oh, uh, no. The dog knows. He was always with your father and never left his side. We have only to wait. And through him, we will find the guilty man.
Look around down there. to talk a language that you understand. Tell me where that dog is. I don't know. You're going to tell me. I'll give you three counts. One. Two. Are you going to tell? I don't know where he is. Three. Michael, I want to impress upon you again the vital importance of getting those plans to me immediately. The success or failure of the entire drive depends upon them. You understand? Yes, sir. Colonel Marshall, on my plan. Uh, excuse me, General. It may be personal. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the, no, sir. That's the place, sir. Will it, it's a memorandum on sharpshooting. Oh, Colonel Marshall, remember, I shall hold you personally responsible for those plans. Yes, sir. My coat. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go crazy. I've never given them the slightest encouragement. She runs me ragged. The military police sergeant is sent for, sir. Send him in. Well, have you caught those two men? Uh, no, sir. You see, it's this way. I don't care which way it is. Those men are A.W.O.L. Absent without leave from the outfit for ten days. 
running around Paris as if this were a picnic instead of a wall. Impersonating officers, trading with congressmen's wives. Last night, one of them had an engagement to elope with the Russian ambassador's mother-in-law and didn't keep the engagement. The Russian ambassador is very angry. Now, I want those two men captured and brought to me personally. I'll see that they go to jail for life. Here's a photograph of them. Now, you go out and get those men. Yes, sir. Was the old man sore? No. He gave me the quad again, a kiss on both cheeks for not catching them AWOL guys. Well, how are you going to catch them? I ain't never even seen them. The old man just gave me a photograph of them. Photograph? There ain't no photograph on here. Can you beat those guys? They got away again. If ever I catch them, I'll bring them in piece for piece. Me too. Come on, soldier. We got work to do. What's the idea? Come, come, boys. Let's have an accounting. Let's have an accounting. Why, we're just talking to some girlfriends. Mm. Did you hear that, Thomas? Let's see your passes, men. Oh, come, come. More God. alert, men. More alert. Look them over, Thomas, then report to me. Why, it's a clear infraction of Rule 6, Section 4, Apartment 3, The People versus John Doe. Mm, just as I thought. Just as I thought. I'm surprised at you men. Acting thusly toward those whom you have sworn to love, honor, and... Oh, baby. <laughs> but that's, we haven't done anything that's enough, soldiers. No but. On your way, or we'll render you horses to combat. Yes. Scrammy. Mm. Scrammy. But, sir, you can't... Uh, every time I make a danger... <laughs> On swat for tea cherries. Vive la boom de ta. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael, we're there. Well done, well done. 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 Something tells me we're going to nail those guys. Me too. Where's your armband? I don't know. What a swell MP you turned out to be. Here we are looking for a couple of guys that have turned Paris upside down. And you lose your armband. Yeah? But where's yours? Well, what? Say. Something tells me we almost had those guys. Me too. Come on, soldier. We'll get them yet. Oh, Peter, 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 Hey, Tommy, I'm getting a little tired of being an MP. So am I. These things are no good anyway. Sometimes they make good handkerchiefs. You know, MP, mop perspiration. Oh, you're <laughs> off again? <laughs> Gilbert, what about promoting ourselves? Splendid idea. Let's be lieutenants. Just the thing. After what we saw, we deserve it. Tommy? Yeah? How would you like to be a general? Not me. There's no chance for promotion. Hmm. 
Here we are. Isn't it wonderful, the future one has in the Army? <laughs> you start at the bottom and go over the top. Now, where are my lieutenants? Here they are. Now, stand still, boy. Stand still. Now, there's a rank. In fact, very rank. How do you do? How do you do? They won't give us a tumble. They must be big game. They may be big game to some people, but they're just animal crackers to me. Well, now, Gilbert, you can't tell. Maybe they don't want to be seen with lieutenants. All right, then we'll be captain. You know, Gilbert, those girls show very good sense. They don't like second lieutenants. All right. You stand still then, shave tail, while I make you a captain. You won't make me a captain. You'll make me a major. You know, the higher we go, the harder they'll fall. A major? Certainly. Where do I keep my major? Ah, here they are. Major. Nope, those are rear admirals. Here's the major. Now, as Adam said to Eve, pick yourself a couple of leaves. Say, Gilbert, if that little dark one don't go for this, she ain't human. <laughs> I've got a sneaking idea that the one in the floppy hat likes the aviators. <laughs> Great. We'll make a few fly remarks. <laughs> splendid, splendid, Major. Would you like some decoration? Well, look now, nothing tantalizing. Just a DSC and a Croix de Guerre. A DSC and a Croix de Guerre. Certainly, certainly. Hold still. There. Boy, you look like a million dollars. I may look like a million dollars, but I'm going to be much easier to make. Beaver! Bonsoir, boom de terre, alley up, and all that sort of jolly nonsense. <laughs> I, uh... I can't recall your name, but I've forgotten your face. My, my, my. That hat certainly has a marvelous wing spread. <laughs> I, uh, I'll bet you take off easily. Major, have you noticed that the large picture hats are coming back? Yes, yes. You know, bit by bit, our women are losing their manhood. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I bet the face beneath the brim is just as lovely as the decoration. And what decoration? Ah, lovely. Mmm. If we only had a little cream and sugar. Major, will you have an apple? Thank you, Captain. I'm glad watermelons are not in season. How are you? <clears throat> Monsieur, you are making a bad mistake. You may be bad, but you're no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well put, Captain. You are very droll, monsieur. Oh, yes, yes. I just droll around from place to place. <laughs> oh, doesn't he say the cutest thing? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, lovely war we're having. Oh, si, je crois que la guerre est très bonne chose, car elle met dans l'occasion à faire connaissance avec beaucoup de soldats américains. Well, you certainly clean that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, what you say I like very much. Oh, I wonder what I said. <laughs> you are distinguished, Avieto. Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. But then, what's my opinion compared to thousands of others? <laughs> Move over, will you, honey? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, do you kiss soldiers? Ah, that is my business. How's business? Mm. <laughs> Monsieur, why do you take up aviation? Now, let me see. Why did I take up aviation? Oh, I have it out here, yeah. They told me I was no good on earth. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> but that's not No, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to make a parachute leap. Oh, a parachute leap? Yes. Yeah. I want to show General Pershing what's in me. Oh, well, no. <laughs> Yes, yes, you know, 
you know, I'm very fond of France. I love dear old France. You know what I like about France? I love to hear the French peasants singing the mayonnaise. Oh, the camels are coming. Oh, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. Oh, the You have some little scotch in the major. <laughs> a little ginger ale, too. Yeah, 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 just don't pay any attention to the Major. He sometimes thinks he's an Airedale. <laughs> make a pig, make a pig, <laughs> fight a steak, peek and ease, that <laughs> As I was relating, when I arrived in Paris, little did I realize what this moment held in store for me. But now I know. <laughs> Yes, now I know. Well, fellow. All right, Major, you can come up. <laughs> My goodness, the Major has been promoted. He is now a Brigadier General. Uh, ladies, pardon me, ladies. May I introduce uh, Major Operation of the Hospital Corps? Major... <laughs> and I, ladies, I am Colonel Simpkins. Colonel Simpkins? Ah, Captain Simpkins. Uh, <laughs> I can understand your mistake. <clears throat> you know, if those two birds wasn't officers, I'd think they were the guys we're after. Officers or no officers? I still think they're the guys we're after. Me too. Can you keep a secret? If she helps you? Oh, sure. Well, uh, we're in the secret service. Yes? Yes, you see, there's so many spies around you know, German spies, Austrian spies, Bulgarian spies, Ooh. an Eskimo spy. <laughs> comical, comical, very comical. Oh, do you know Colonel Marshall? <laughs> do we know Colonel Isn't Marshall? Isn't he the spell? <laughs> Say, do you know that Colonel Marshall thinks so much of us that he gives our photographs to every soldier under his command? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially the MP. <laughs> sure. Well, he's a very good friend of mine. He comes here to this restaurant every day. Here? Yes. Well, 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 so long, girl. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you around, girl. Oh, but must you really go so soon? Yes, you see, Waterman is drilling a new inkwell, and we've got to look it over. Oh, <clears throat> Hey. Hey. Well, we wasn't sure Did whether you hear that, Major? He wasn't sure. Oh, dear me, oh my, oh my, oh my. That, to be sure, is the greatest offense in the army. Yes, yes. Let the punishment fit the crime. Mm, I'm a stink, Major, I'm a stink. Don't strain yourself now, Captain. No, oh, I hate to be in such a state. You know my nasty nerves. Let me see. <clears throat> what will I do? Aha! I'll be in all one thing. Get yours. Yes, sir. Colonel Marshall. Oh, hello, Polga. Strange that I always meet you here. Always I'm here waiting for you to be nice to me. I can't be nice. I'm married. Oh, but can't you be just a little bit nice, huh? Now, Polga, I don't want to be rude. But if I am nice, you send me perfumed love letters that will ruin me. Oh, You've but... got to stop it, you understand? And what's more? What do you mean by sending your love notes in official United States Army envelopes? Because if I do not send them in official United States Army envelopes, you do not open my letter. Yes, but don't you know that's a serious offense? What? Not opening my letter? No, no, sending them in official envelopes. Oh, but can I help it that you are so magnificent? Oh, mon brave, do not scold poor Olga. You are always so cold. Hot or cold, you've got to stop sending those letters. J'aime beaucoup les soldats américains. They are so snappy. Hmm. So handsome. Well, of course, when it comes to that, you know these military men. Mm -hmm. To your left hand. Take me to luncheon. I can't take you to luncheon. 
Why not? My wife is waiting for me. You might introduce me to your wife. Yes, I might. Hmm? But I won't. <clears throat> See you later. Well, we had him again. Yeah. Hey, listen. When I do get hold of them, I'm going to knock them so cold they'll keep for years. Me too. Let me go or I'll bust you in the beach. You'll bust who in what beach? Oh. Then there is a Santa Claus. Step up, soldier. What else, Phil? Be Caleb 2 A W O L. Well, you better not let my dad catch you. Ah. Uh, who's your dad? Colonel Marshall. Are you sure? What? I mean, uh. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you know, you, you flatter him. Oh. Have you ever met my dad? No, but uh, he's trying to meet me. I'll fix it. No, no, don't do me any favors. <laughs> Say, you know when I first saw you, I, I I thought you were a little French girl. Honest? Yeah. Hot dog, that's my repressed desire. Say. What? Do you think I could fascinate him? Fascinate him? Honey, you could mutilate him. Jumbo Kool Aid sold out to Mary Jan. They are so handsome, so snappy. Oh. Oh. It's a good thing I've been vaccinated. Say, honey, I want to ask you something. It might sound a little personal. You know, at first. What is it? Do you love me? Well, you'll have to give me a little time. Well, you better make up your mind. It's 2 30 now. You know, this Paris is a fast place. Hey, isn't Paris a grand place to live in? Do you, do you live in Paris? Uh-huh. <laughs> then Paris is a grand place to live in. Say. What? Are you married? No, I just naturally look worried. Oh, I think it's a shame to send cute little fellows like you to the front. That's what I said, but you can't tell these generals anything. I think it's wonderful us happening to meet this way. Gee, and I think it's wonderful to meet a girl who's beautiful enough to be dumb and doesn't take advantage of it. When you are on duty, marching all alone, I can hear you pass by my door. Precious little beauty, you'll be safe and sound, guarded as you never were before. When you put that joy away, mm. baby, I'll get old. Let my light fly away, tell me what to do. When you get blue, just whistle for me, dear. I'll promise you I will never fail to hear. Then I'll pretend it's just a little bird. I'll find my sweetie without another word. When in the shade, dear, someone you see. Until the break of day Whistling the blues away
learned that in 16 years. Danny, will you drive to the right? Will you drive to the right? Oh, monsieur, did I help you? Well, you bent my bumper a little bit, yeah. Oh, you have an extinguished aviator? Yes, and I'm just in the midst of a non-stop flight. Oh, but ne voulez-vous prendre avec moi, sir? <laughs> we'll take that up a little later, honey. Hey! That's the Kleidel's car! I go again. Hey! Who's driving it? One of them ain't W.O.L., well, sir. Get that man or I'll put you back in the ranks. Give me a car. Whose car? Anybody's car. Get the Colonel a 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 car. Oh, no, Brav. At last we are together. You may be together, but I'm not. Get the Colonel a Get me a car. what a pickup this car had. Say, isn't there any place where you ain't? Snap out of it. The MPs are on it. Oh, gee. You know, those MPs are doing everything they can to make this war miserable for me. Listen, honey. If anything should happen that we're separated, you meet me here tonight at 8 o'clock. Oh, are you looking for trouble? <laughs> I don't have to look for it. Gilbert is always with me. Listen, our song. Isn't that pretty? When you get blue, just whistle for me, dear. <coughs> I'll promise you I will never fail to hear. <coughs> then I'll pretend it's just a little bird. <coughs> I'll find my sweetie without another word. When in the shade, dear, someone you see, don't be afraid, dear, for it'll be, it'll be. We'll cuddle close until the break of day. We'll sing the blues away. sitting on the ground for? Because it happened to be there when I landed. How did you get in the colonel's car? I belong in it. I'm his daughter. I remember now. I've seen you with him. Gee, I'm glad you came. Say, I'm after those guys. They make love to every girl they see. The little one? He's the worst. Oh, he is, is he? I'll fix him. What's his name? Don't you know? 
Well, we were so busy, I forgot to find out. Tommy Turner. And the skinny one is Gilbert Simpkins. A-W-O-L. Impersonating officers and fooling women. Fooling girls? Yes, and laughing at them. Fooling girls and laughing at them, huh? I'll get him for you. How? Well, he told me to meet him. Never mind. This is my big moment. I'll capture them both, single-handed. Hey, you're pretty clever, ain't you? Sure I'm clever. Say, maybe you're my big romance. Ma'am? Well, I mean, is it against Army regulations for a colonel's daughter to get a yen for a sergeant? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, I... Jumbo kool aid soldats American. They are so handsome, so snappy. Be nice to me, big boy. <laughs> What were you doing in that trunk with the private? Well, those two fellows were trying to run away with me, but I surrounded them. You? Well, I shot at them and missed, but don't worry, Pop. I'll get them for you yet. My little baby. Just a chip off the old block. Colonel Marshall's not there, huh? All right, thank you. Can't you telephone anywhere else? Well, we've tried everywhere. Or oh, perhaps he went to Pierre's and missed you. No matter where he went, he didn't miss me. Well, Colonel Marshall, sir. Uh, not here. I'll take it. Delightful older. Uh, yes, that's the new one. Yeah. Uh, springtime of love. Mm. You know, these friends, you can't beat them when it comes to perfume. Hey, what an odd idea. Sending army orders on perfume paper. Uh, yes. Uh, no, 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 not at all. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, uh, in this way, we can classify them immediately. Now, for instance, uh, now this would be from the quartermaster's department. No. Well, uh, if that is from the quartermaster's department, I imagine it would be simply glorious to smell an order from general headquarters. <laughs> yes, I, yes. I, I never thought of that. Yes. <laughs> no. Ah, it is so coincident we meet again. Didn't I tell you to keep away from here? Don't be mad, Pop. Introduce me. I haven't got time. Delighted to meet a friend of Pop. I'll show them up at you. And that time in a hurry. Okay, Pop. Run along. I might pick up a few pointers from this baby. <laughs> He's the kind. <laughs> Has this whole blame family gone crazy? Billing and cooing like a pair of nitwitted prickle dumbs right in front of that gate? What are you doing here? Seven days leave, sir. Well, you can send them all away from my daughter. Oh, don't be violent, Dad. Jim wants to marry me. Oh, he does, eh? <laughs> a man who takes on a wife in a war at the same time is insane. Clear out. Yes, sir. Oh, Father, why do you hate Jim? Because he wants to take you away from me. I went to a lot of trouble to get my family. <laughs> I married your mother, didn't I, eh? Well, I decided that you shouldn't marry a soldier. You said it. But can't you look after your family? I've got a war on my hands. Yes, I just saw one of your orders from the quartermaster's department. Springtime of love. <laughs> when a man kisses you, does that mean he's really in love with you? Men kisses? <laughs> No one can say nothing by those. Say, do you know anything particular about men with curly hair? Curly hair, straight hair, no hair, they're all the same. Suppose you fell in love with a fella that loved every girl he met. What would you do? Make believe I love him desperately. Never cease to say, je t'aime, je t'aime. 
Write him letters. Two, three, six. Every day. Oh, gee. I had a lot of trouble with my big moment. He's A-W-O-L. You go from far. A-W-O-L? A whale of a liar. Oh. But you will win him. There are many ways. Have you ever tried perfume? Perfume? Mm, there's one in particular. Printemps d'amour. In English, it is called springtime of love. One thousand francs to bottle. Why don't you try some? I will. I'm going to get revenge if I have to get a perfume. <laughs> oh, Ma, come on over and meet what they go for in Paris. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. Oh, but she's one of Pop's girlfriends. Annette, don't be silly. That's not funny. Come along, you've said enough. Oh, Mom, can I have a thousand francs to buy some perfume? What sort of perfume? Oh, it's a wow. It lures men. What? Well, she uses it. They call it springtime of love. Springtime of love, eh? She'll be lucky if winter comes. Gee. You know, after all, Gilbert, love is peace, quiet, and tranquility. That isn't love. That's sleep. Do you really think that Gaga and Ned is going to show up? Say, she isn't Gaga. She has eyes like the heavens. Cheeks like peaches of Picardy. Oh, isn't that pretty? Is that them? You'll scare them off. Here's my gun, miss. And remember, we get 500 for them, dead or alive. Be sure they're the right guys, though. Tommy Turner. Curly hair. Gilbert Simpkins. Skinny. Wears horn rimmed glasses. Wait for me at the palais. I'll deliver the body. F O B. See at the palais. Gee, honey, I knew you'd come. Ah, I seem to feel the call of the great outdoors. Is this your car? Yeah, we picked it up for practically nothing. <laughs> yeah. Everything about it makes a noise except the horn. Ah, horn rimmed glasses. The description is perfect. <laughs> She's not as gaga as I thought she was. Curly hair. Gee, I'm lucky. Kiss me. <laughs> Just as I expected. Now, you, what's my method? <clears throat> what makes you think you're so lucky, honey? Because I've got you. <laughs> Boy, I kill him. I kill him. Does that really make so much difference to you? It means that I'll make $500 out of you. Out of him? You must expect to know him a long time. No, from both of you. I'll make $500 tonight. From both of us? <laughs> You're in Paris now, boy. You two boys are A-W-O-L, and I'm going to take you back to my father, Colonel Marshall. What's that? Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait Let's get this thing straight. You got it. Do you mean to tell me that you'd turn me in after I've decided to let you fall in love with me? Fall in love with you? Why, it's me that she cares for. This for you. <laughs> and that for you. And this for your papa. Papa gets the best of everything. Uh, honey, where, w would you pardon us a moment? Yes, just one little moment. Oh, no. Stick around, soldier. Uh, we won't be long. We won't be long. Just a short conference. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> she wants us to come back. <laughs> Odd how one will misunderstand a thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, would you mind putting that down? You're embarrassing us. Yes, if it went off, we'd be terribly upset. You drive a car, don't you, four-eyes? 
Well, after a fashion, yes. Uh, what he doesn't know about driving would fill a hospital. Get in there and drive. She's taking us for a ride. Listen, if you ever talk fast in your life, boy, don't stutter now. Get up there. <laughs> you get in the back seat with me. Oh, <laughs> it just occurred to me that I haven't a license for driving. So if you'll pardon me, I'll just wander around. Get in there. Peace, quiet, and tranquility. We have a lollipop? No, I don't like lollipops. What are you doing with these powder puffs? Powder puffs? I've been eating them all day. I thought they were marshmallows. Oh, will you step on it? Will you step on it? You're still in second gear. What's he talking about? He wants me to make love to you so you won't turn us in. Oh, is that it? Well, it's no use. Not after the way you let me flop on the ground this afternoon. You'll forgive me, honey. You've got such a big heart. Detour, detour. The girl didn't fall on her heart. You know, honey, when you put your hand in my hair back there, it just seemed to fill me with electricity. What? A little thing like that? Oh, don't do that. But I like it. <laughs> well, that's in the bag. Come, Tommy, we must away. Get back there and drive. Oh, you want me to continue driving, is that it? Yes, and drive slower. <laughs> Would that you were birds and I a humble shotgun. Do you think this is going to work? It's a cinch. That's a smart little girl. Leave it to her. <laughs> And just for that, I'm going to turn you to it and get that $500. Wait, I'll tell you what to do. Just turn him in and take two fifty. dollars They'll put him in the guardhouse. Great. That'll give us a chance to be alone. Get back, quick. Don't let him see you. You're never satisfied, always complaining. You don't seem to realize the problems I have. I don't see how they could have a war without you. I know I couldn't. Oh, stop it. You'd have the last word with an echo. Where's Eileen? Oh, no, she's with Jim. There you are. I have to attend to everything. Can I be both father and mother? I shouldn't be surprised. With your versatility. <laughs>
in love. <laughs> well, they do say that love makes the world go round, but don't let it make you dizzy. You know, Gilbert, and that makes me want to do big things. <laughs> Why don't you try washing an elephant? Oh, say, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I tear the world wide open for that girl. I'm the... Where's that... Where Doughboys go in there. Doughboys? Oh, we. Oui. Oh, avec des grands lunettes noires et un avec des cheveux tout à fait frisés. Are you sure? Oh, je suis certain. Is there any way those guys can get out? Non, monsieur. Those two doors are the only way they can come in or out. Et monsieur, la cuisine est tout à fait enfermée. Les fenêtres sont fermées à clé et le patron est très, très serré. Okay, pal. Merci, monsieur. Soldier, we got him. Oh, boy. Release! Step out! Waiter! It's a colonel. I want some attention. Uh, what is it you want, sir? Attention! do for you, sir? We want a nice, quiet dinner for two. Nice, quiet dinner for two. No soup. What have you do, Joe? Now, let me think. Uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Is it vegetable, animal, or mineral? <laughs> In the food? I'm sorry, but we're all out of those. Would you like some naturalized Swiss cheese? How's your turtle soup? Oh, very snappy, sir. Very snappy. Very well. Make it quick. Bouli gilet de liver Turtle soup, very snappy. I think I'll have a young chicken. It must be very young. In fact, extremely young. <laughs> Maybe I'd better bring you an egg. One premature chicken. Have you a wild duck? <laughs> no, but we could take a tame one out and aggravate it for you. <laughs> I'd like to have a nice juicy partridge with... Dressing and brown gravy. <laughs> so would I. You know, I'm starved. Good eggs, 200 francs. Yes. Your eggs are very high. Ah, but you must remember that an egg is a whole day's work for a hen. <laughs> I think I'll have a nice fresh artichoke. He thinks he'll have a nice fresh artichoke. He thinks he'll have a nice fresh artichoke. Now, let me see. What will I have next? Indigestion, I guess. <laughs> uh, would you like some nice, uh, petite mamie? Petite mamie? How do you spell it? Oh, um, I'll bring you a cup of coffee. Uh, and listen, don't ask him if he has frog's legs. <laughs> How dare you, sir? That'll be all. Hurry. Yeah, 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 we, yeah sir. We'll do that little thing, Lieutenant. Uh, <laughs> I'm awfully pleased to have met you. Wait up, you. Come on, soldier. Let's look upstairs. I'll bet he comes back with a cream puff. Garçon? Coming right up, madam. Coming right up. <laughs> well, as I live in the hail. How are you, honey? How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> How is it you are here? Uh, Secret Service. Oh, is that why you wait on Colonel Marshall? I beg your pardon? Colonel Marshall. He's at the table you wait on. Oh, so it is. <laughs> the dear old colonel. Looking well, too, isn't he? <laughs> What a man, what a man. <laughs> uh, 
I'm sorry, uh, we're all out of soup. Of all the idiots. Bring me some food. Oh, you want food? Of course. <laughs> you know, I knew there was something. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. My cocoa is cold. I said my cocoa is cold. <laughs> Everything all right, sir? No, everything's all wrong. The trouble with this place is you you have no decorum. Oh, we have it, we have it. But it isn't very fresh. What's that, sir? Pardon me. I just got a tip that that old fellow was Colonel Marshall. You better find out for sure. Leave it to me. Pardon me, sir. But are you a relative of Colonel Marshall? Why, I am Colonel Marshall. Ah, that explains the resemblance. It's Colonel Marshall, all right. You want the colonel to have this note? Oh. Colonel! Note from the young lady across the way. Wait, now, don't give it a thought. Don't give it a thought. Always glad to be of service. Dear Snuggle Pup, who is the old fop that's with you? And where... I can't make out that word. Wait, how dare you? Well, what is it? What is it? Why, it's a message from the military police sergeant. Reporting on two desperate men, absent without leave. Oh, <laughs> what a liar. Wait, some girl, sir. You have such a thing. Can you, sir? Why aren't you in the army? Well, that's a long story, Colonel. You see, it's this way. It's my feet. Well, what's the matter with them? Flat? Cold. I can't eat this duck. Send for the manager. It's no use. He won't eat it either. I... Here, you might try it. Just <laughs> cool. Coming up like a storm. Will you give me a serviette, please? Serviette? Search the name one. I'd like a serviette. A serviette? Search the one. You should be stopped. Oh, I can't speak French. I want the proprietor. Where is the proprietor? I am the proprietor, monsieur. Anything I can do for you? Do you speak French? Oui, oui. I want this man to start. Parlez-vous français? Oui, oui. Then you're fired. Pulisher, <laughs> General Marshall's office. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, General Hale for you, sir. Yes, General. I've just been advised by G2 your plans are on the way over. Well, what the deuce is delaying them? Uh, Colonel Marshall, sir. Uh, just a minute, General. Here's something now. Springtime of love. Uh, I'm very sorry, Jeffrey. Yes, sir. Yes, it, it, it was something else. Oh, hang it all. I can't hang on this phone all day. You get those plans for me. And remember, I am holding you strictly accountable for them. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, General. Uh, here's another message. Oh, get those plans and get them quick. 
Before you give it to me, smell it. Tobacco. Here they are at last. Get General Hale on the phone and tell him I'm sending him through. And who will they detail to carry them, sir? Lieutenant James Reed. Locate my daughter and you'll find him. Order an escort to prepare to leave at once. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Reed, sir. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Lieutenant. I've got a job for you. This has to go to General Hale as fast as a man can carry it. General Hale, sir? But he's at the front. You'll have a car and the best driver available. But I'm on leave, sir. This is no detail for a tin soldier, Reed. Perhaps I've made a mistake. No mistake as far as I'm concerned, sir. What are the orders? You will leave immediately. Captain Jones will attend to the details of your escort. Yes, sir. I came to say goodbye to Eileen. Well, if you're white, you'll say goodbye to Ma first. Say, why did Pop send it to you? Oh, he gave me some very important papers to deliver to General Hale at the front. Oh, yeah? Well, that's sort of dangerous, ain't it? Well, it's not exactly a health resort. And if you deliver them, it'll make you a hero? Oh, yes. A great big hero. You know, Jim, I like you. You have such an open face. Thanks. I think you'll be very charming when you grow up. Well, you don't know the half of it. You're pretty clever, aren't you? Sure, I'm clever. Hey, maybe you're my big romance. What's that? Well, I mean, uh, is it against Army regulations for a colonel's daughter to get a young for a lieutenant? What are you talking about? Oh, Jimbo, cool, eh, so that's American. They are so snappy, so handsome. Be nice to me, big boy. Say, what are you trying to do, flirt with me? Yeah, I'm trying to flirt with you. Well, look, I tell you what you do. You meet me here. Yeah? In about ten years. Hello. Hi there, babe. Did you get that perfume? I'll say I did. And it is good? Is it good? Boy, it's good. <laughs> but I've got something much more exciting than perfume. What is that? Papers, important ones. I stole them from Jim. Does Jim know this? Certainly not. But I've got to get these papers started to the front before he finds out they're gone. And you think you can do it? Sure, if you'll help me. Now listen, my boyfriend will do anything I tell him to, but his buddy is a hard nut. Get me? The buddy with the golden? He is for me. Great. Now you work on him, and we'll get them both back to the front. And these papers go with them. I will convince you there. And I will convince Tommy. <laughs> Somebody paging me? My angel! My sugar! My goodness! Are you two at it again? Oh, Rigardi! Never was I so glad to behold anyone. There's a catch in this somewhere. They're too glad to see it. And that isn't. She loves me. Monsieur, you have the chance to do two ladies a great favor. Uh-oh. Here it comes. And at the same time, do something grand for your country. Mm-hmm. I don't like the way they're leading up to this. Uh, what will you girls have? Oh, it is nothing. Oh, it is nothing. Well, we can handle it. <laughs> All you have to do is deliver this to General Hale. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? You see, we're great friends of General Hale. And his partner? His partner. Yeah. You don't mean to tell me that you've never heard of Hale and Harkey. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. We'd love to see dear old Hale again. Uh, where about in Paris, is he? Ah, General Hale is at the front. Always at the front. Always at the front. <laughs> mm. It must be some other Hale. Yes. Yeah. Well, so long, girls. We'll see you around. Oh, you're not going to back out. Back out? No, I'm going to walk right out face forward. You see, uh, <clears throat> our schedule is so filled up for the day. Oh, but this will make you a great big hero. <laughs> yeah. It'll probably make me the unknown soldier. Wait a minute, Gilbert. Let's do it. I want to be a hero for Annette. You see, he wants to do something great for his country. He aspires. <laughs> do you not? Ma'am? You aspire. Yeah, a little under here. Ah, oh, Tommy, you'll do it, won't you? Sure I will. But I want Gilbert to go with me. 
You and Tommy go in there. Perhaps I can persuade Gilbert to be a hero, too. <laughs> you might, but uh, it will be difficult in broad daylight. disappoint me, are you? Not for anything in the world, sweetheart. If you take these papers to General Hale, maybe Dad'll forgive you for being A-W-O-L. Gee, I'm ashamed of myself. You know, I'm an awful sap. But since I met you, everything has changed. I want to be what you want me to be. My hero. Well, you must tell me all about yourself. Well, I'm afraid that would take a long time. A long time. For instance, I spent all last summer shooting tigers in Africa. But, monsieur, there are no tigers in Africa. <laughs> I know it. I killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> Come, sit over here. Yes, yes, last, last. <clears throat> hi ho. <laughs> you know, they laughed at me when I sat down, mm -hmm. but when I began to play. <laughs> My goodness, what well-developed arms you have. Yes, you see, I play a lot of tennis. Yes. <clears throat> you dance a lot, too, don't you? Oh, you bad boy. <laughs> oh, God, I'll bet you dance exactly like a heifer. Oh, zephyr, zephyr. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, how about it? How about what? Or, uh, <clears throat> how about you and me getting married? If I marry you, do you think you will be able to support me? I was afraid you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Ah, Gilbert, you are so fascinating. Yes, I suppose so. You could be such a great man. Take Napoleon. He was a great man. Yeah, but he's a bus now. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, you come from fighting stock, do you not? Fighting stock? I'll say I do. Father and mother were always at it. Dog darn you couldn't stop me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I come from nice family, too. My father was born in Moscow. My mother was born in Vladivostok. And I was born in St. Petersburg. Is that so? Funny how you all got together. <laughs> ah. Little Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> no, it's his father. <laughs> and look, look, he's blown along a hunk of ginger ale. Ginger ale? That's champagne, and it has one big kick. Yeah, is that so? Stick around, son, stick around. <laughs> you know, Gilbert, when I bring champagne, I never know what I am doing. Now, wait a minute. Let's get this thing straight. You mean to tell me when you drink this stuff, you never know what you're doing? Not a thing. I won't need you anymore, son. I won't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Olga, where did you say you were from? St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a coincidence. You know, a thing like that wouldn't happen again in a million years. I tell you, it's a small world after all. Oh, are you from St. Petersburg, too? No, I'm from Seattle. Oh. <laughs> oh, Gilbert, I'm beginning to feel good. Yeah, but you... You still know what you're doing, don't you? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, have another drink, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Honey, mm -hmm. how about a little kid? No, no, no. The colonel of your regiment is going to stop all spooning and kissing. Well, he ought to. He's getting too old for that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to him all the time, right? Oh, Gilbert, I could love a man like you if you would only do something. Well, how can I do anything? <laughs> you kind of got me all done, I mean... <laughs> Something big. I mean, something heroic. Something like remettre le message général. Oh, that. Any time you say, baby. Any time you say. You will go to General Hale for me? I'll go to Hale for you any time, baby. Any time. Oh, I knew you would deliver the paper. What's that? You're going to take the paper to the front. Honey, you lied to me about that champagne. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Now I know that you love me. Oh, I love you, honey. I'm mad about you. I'm mad about you. To me, you're a beautiful sprite. Uh, sprite, sprite, sprite. sprite. Oh, why do I ever vest like this? Why do I ever vest? Do you know that I haven't ever vest like this in years? What have you done to me, boy? What have you done to me? I've been hard-boiled all of my life, but you have conquered my shell. I have never had a wife, for married life is swell. Love is in your life like sweet perfume in the springtime bursting into bloom. Ah, oh, 
Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Do I affect you that way, honey? <laughs> Mama! Oh, now, wait a minute. What a family. Oh, honest, Pop, I didn't mean any harm. Captain Jones! Captain Jones! Yes, sir. Those two men, Gilbert Simpsons and Tommy Turner, have the general's papers. Cover every road leading to the front. You must get those men. Send ten details, twenty details, thirty details. For... Get those men. Yes, sir. Where can we 
we find General Hale, sir? General Hale is farther front. How do we get to the front line, sir? The only way is through that communicating trench. What do you want to see General Hale about? We have important papers for him, sir. Your Simpkins and Turner? Oh, Captain, how'd you get? The communicating trench has just been blown, sir. They can't get through now, Captain. Somebody will have to crawl through that barrage. I can't order a man to go through that inferno. Give me those papers. I'll call for volunteers. Men, I have some very important papers that must reach General Hale at once. Communication to the front line trenches is cut off. I want a volunteer for this dangerous job. Say no more, Captain. Say no more. Simpkins, you're made of the right stuff. It's going to take a lot of guts to get through there. I understand exactly, Captain. And I've got just the man for you. Private Turner, sir. The nerviest man in the whole army. Ah, oh, Private Turner. Here are the papers. Good luck. The best way over is through that cut there. Yes, sir. Hey, wait a minute, Tommy. Gee, kid, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get into this. Oh, gee, Gilbert. That's a okay. fight. Yeah, but... You know, something's liable to go wrong. Uh, you know, you might not come back. Oh, gee, now, wait a minute. I'll just, no, I'll come back, all right. It'll be okay. But if I don't, you'll tell Annette, won't you? Yeah, I'll tell her. Lord, man, you can't stop there now. The more you come, the more you got ten feet. That's all right, buddy. Now, he needs me, and I'm going for him. Get you. I don't know. It, it's my back. I, I, I don't seem to feel a thing. Oh, I don't. Here, kid. Take a break of this. Is that better now, Tommy? Do you feel better now, kid? Here. Do you feel that, Tommy? I don't feel a thing. Wait a minute, Tommy. the officers to save my reputation and standing as an officer. It has not only saved the world for democracy, but it has saved me from my family. And don't forget, if I ever lay my hands on those two doughboys, I deliver them to you piece by piece. Woo! Surprise! Any phone calls? Oh, dear, sir. What do you mean by this? 
What did you do with that message for General Hale? I, uh, we decided not to deliver it. Oh, you did, eh? What did you do with it? We opened it up and read it. What? <laughs> it's an old Indian custom, Colonel. An old Indian custom. In case we lost it, we could deliver it by word of mouth. <laughs> You know, I know every word by heart. You'll be shot at sunrise. <laughs> when you know what we know, you'll be half shot at sunrise. Oh, there you are. What are you doing? Oh, 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 turn oh, 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 now. <laughs> you'll get a parallel stroke. Colonel, I want to ask you. Did you really want this message delivered to General Hale? Uh, 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 come with me in my office. I want to speak with you privately. You, uh, you uh, say you memorized this paper? <laughs> Every darn word. What did it say? My dear Snugglepuff. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Well, if it isn't enough, we know some more. <laughs> Do you know what I could do to you for this? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was just thinking what we could do to you for this. <laughs> Colonel, what I want to know is, why did you treat little Olga so mean? You know, I was never so... Motorman's glove. General Hale's plans. Yeah. Where did you get them? I found them right here on my desk. What does this mean? It means that you sent Olga's note to the general instead of the plan. Oh, that Olga. I'll have her neck. <laughs> no, Colonel. I'll have that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't get us a funny thing ever. You know, something's got to be done about this. Yes, yes. It seems as though armistice has been declared for everybody but you. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Oh, draw. What? 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 The colonel wants you two kids to get married right away. Don't we, colonel? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yes, uh, quite tall, quite tall, quite tall. Good heavens. The old man's gone crazy. <laughs> My darling Snugglepuff, oh, where uh, were you last night? I waited for you for hours. Have you forgotten your old guy? <laughs> <laughs> colonel, there's nothing to it. We men have got to stick together. Tommy, even I'm glad you're back. So am I. And the colonel wants us to be married right away. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs>